Hello, welcome to Bucket List Time with Ann and Wayne. Uh, I'm Wayne, obviously, and I'm out here in the yard by myself today working. And uh, I got tired of this hand crank for our Kodiak camper. I'm getting old and I don't like it. So I bought this uh, electric trailer jack. I got it from Harbor Freight. Uh, it was on sale, but normally they're, I think, just over $100, which is not bad for an electric jack. So anyway, we're going to install this today and see how it works. Now, after I open the box up, we got the jack, obviously. It only mounts with three hole bolts. Uh, we'll just take these three here out of the old one, take the old one off, mount this one in its place. It also came in the instructions with, uh, it also got a fuse for the uh, hot wire coming from the 12 volts to operate it. I uh, got three new bolts for mounting it, and uh, they are lock nuts, so that's a good thing. I like that. And it also comes with a hand crank, so if something should happen to your jack, um, you know, you, you hope it don't go bad, but if it did go bad, or if your battery on your camper was dead, or you had a bad electrical connection, whatever, you can use the crank and still crank this thing up and down, so I like that. So uh, let's get started on this install. Now I tried different size sockets. I found a 9 16 will fit. Fits pretty good, just a wee bit loose. I got a 14 millimeter. Seems to be a little bit better fit. So we're gonna use the 14 millimeter to remove these screws. One thing I just realized that I forgot to do, uh, and this is very important, the weight of the tongue of my camper is still on this jack. Don't make that mistake. So now I'm going to get some blocks to go under the tongue and take the weight off the jack. Um, that's just a big old duh -huh. I really should have done that to start with, uh, but don't make the same mistake I did. And another thing that I'm going to include in this video is about connecting the wires. Uh, you don't want to miss that point. It'll be a little bit later in the video unless you're really good at connecting wires and making them last long term. Um, I've got a lot of history behind me of boat trailers and they're notorious for giving trouble with the lights not working and I've learned to connect wires for a boat trailer that's going to be constantly underwater and wet and stuff that they just don't give trouble. So don't miss that near the end of the video. Okay, now I have finished taking the, the bolts out of the old jack. There's three of them, like I said earlier. And then this jack should just lift right out. Of course, I got smart and finally put blocks under the camper tongue. And there's the old jack. We'll just lay it down over there. Now, um, I think, yeah, let me get down here where you can see me. I think I'm gonna use the old bolts instead of the new bolts that came with the jack because this piece of metal is threaded. So I can use the threads that are actually part of the tongue as opposed to the nuts and bolts that came with the jack. Um, so the first thing I need to do is take this foot off. So let's do that, pull the pin, take the foot off. Obviously we'll be putting that back on later. And then the jack goes down in that hole. Like so. One thing that the instructions will tell you to do is underneath here, uh, clean the paint off around at least one bolt hole on the camper frame as well as on the bottom of the jack and the reason they do that is to get a good electrical ground from the jack to the frame of the camper and uh, I'll be honest with you I'm not real pleased with that I, I would like to see them have an actual ground wire but when you hook this thing up if you have trouble with your electrical connection not working well at times go under one of your bolts put your wire from here to the frame of the camper. And if you're having a ground problem between the jack and the tongue, that should help eliminate that. 
Uh, so what I'm going to do, they sent these little star washers. What I'm going to try, I'm going to put one of these little star washers under each bolt. And uh, I think that'll, I think that'll help to uh, maintain a good ground for me between the, uh, the jack and the camper frame. If I can get them in there. Okay, that one's ready to go. Put the top washer on there. And now I just need to get the star washers under the other two bolts. And like I said, I'm putting the star washer between the flange, the bottom of the flange, and the top of the housing for the camper tongue. That way these star washers will bite in to the bottom plate of the jack as well as the top plate of the camper tongue. That should give me a good electrical ground so I won't have problems with uh, not having a ground for this jack. Now I've got all three of my bolts started. I got the original bolts. I got the original washer on top and the star washer between the plate of the jack and the top of the camper. So now I just tighten these down. And just tighten them a little at a time and just keep going around until you get all three good and even tightened. But don't tighten them down really tight one at a time. Uh, got hawks flying over. Uh, just work your way around a little at a time until you get all three of them good and tight. I got mosquitoes out here too. That should get all three of my bolts good and tight, so the jack should be securely mounted. Now it's just a matter of hooking up the electrical. Now that I've got the jack mounted, I got my wire routed underneath things, and just to make sure that it's going to work, I'm going to hold the end of my wire to the positive terminal of my battery, and I'm going to try the jack. And it does work means I got a pretty good ground under the uh, base of the jack. Now let's hook up the uh, 12 volt supply. Now to hook this thing up, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fuse that they sent with the jack and I'm going to cut this wire here because you have to cut it to use it because it has to go in series with uh, your wire going to uh, your 12 volt supply on your battery. And uh, just Strip these wires back a little bit. There's all kind of wire strippers you can get. I've used my knife for more years than I care to think about. So it's what I'm comfortable with. But there's a lot of ways to strip wire back. So we got that prepared. Now this is the wire for my jack. I only need it to go there. I'm gonna leave myself a little bit extra, but I'm gonna cut a little bit of this off. So I'm gonna cut it right about here. And uh, I like my little Swiss Army knife. I can use my, the scissors of my Swiss Army knife to uh, shorten that wire. Then I'll use the blade to strip off the insulation at the end. And there we go. Now, if I can find my other wire, now here's what you need to do. And like I said, I've done a lot of boat trailers over my life and they're notorious for giving trouble with electrical. If you don't want to have any trouble with your electrical, first thing you do is twist these wires together good. That gets you a good mechanical connection. All right, then take a soldering iron. If you don't have a soldering iron, there's other things you can do. 
But let's solder these wires together now. And I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but basically I'm heating the wires and putting solder on them. And like I said, that gives you a good electrical connection. When you twist the wires together, it gives you a good mechanical connection. The solder gives you a good electrical connection. Both of these points are very important. Now let this cool down a little bit. Now the next part I'm gonna tell you to do is equally as important. Now at this point, I got everything connected and this is liquid electrical tape. Okay? Get you some electric, liquid electrical tape and coat this thing good with it. Back onto the insulation of your wires a little bit. And I'm gonna tell you, this is like miracle juice to make sure that your wires and your connections don't give you trouble in the future. This is a step you do not want to skip. Now when this is dry, I'll clip the end a little bit. I'll put a little bit more on there. I'll let that dry. And then I'll put electrical tape over it to make sure that it's protected as well as sealed out from moisture. Uh, after I do that, this connection will never give me trouble. Now the other end, I'm gonna splice on a connector to hook to my battery. Uh, so let's do that next. Let this dry. So there you have it. The only thing I didn't show you was the end of that red wire that has the fuse. I crimped a connector onto that to hook to our battery, hook that up. And uh, I finished taping up that uh, connection that I soldered and put the liquid, liquid electrical tape on it. And uh, I still got a few things to do. I want to put some wire ties on, on this wire a little bit. I got one here uh, for the wire coming down from the motor. I want to put a couple more back in there just to neaten that up and make sure things don't get in a, a position where they might get damaged. But uh, that's it. And to show you how this thing works, there's light on both sides of it. And right back here on the back side, there's a little switch that turns those LED lights off and on. And the switch for raising and lowering the jack is right here. If you pull it towards you, the foot goes down, which raises the tongue of the camper up. As you can see, there's no weight on this block now. And uh, if you push the switch, the foot goes up, the camper goes down. And now that block has all the camper weight or the tongue of the camper on it now. So, so far, I'm very happy with this. If I find problems or other ideas in the future, I will add that to the description below. So if you have any questions, look in the description below this video and see if I've added any comments of how this has worked over time. Sometimes when you install a new thing like this, it works great when it's new. It doesn't work long term. If that happens, I will add comments to the descriptions. So uh, we just like to say we appreciate you visiting. We really wish you would click like on our video and share it with your friends. And also, if you subscribe to our channel, it helps you find our other videos. We hope to be doing a lot of destination videos, as well as a lot of do-it-yourself things around your campers. Uh, so anyway, that's it. We appreciate you visiting Bucket List Time with Ann and Wayne, and we hope you have a wonderful camping trip.